Hi there, I'm Elizabeth with LA's Handcrafted Jewelry and welcome to my channel where I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for those looking to learn the art of wire weaving. And today this video is about wire, specifically what kind of wire that you need to wire wrap and wire weave. I know there's a lot of questions out there floating around like, should I use copper wire, aluminum wire, should I use round, square, half hard, dead soft? There's a lot of questions out there. So I hope to answer some of those questions in this video as well as sharing what types of wire I actually use for my jewelry pieces here in the studio. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. And I'd also like to tell you about my new website where you can sign up for a monthly newsletter detailing new tutorials, videos, and any upcoming projects. You can also find some written tutorials for sale if you prefer working at your own pace, and it helps me to continue creating free tutorials for all of you. I've left the links in the description below, and thank you so much for taking the time to support this channel. So let's go ahead and jump into wire shapes. And we're going to cover just three main shapes in this particular video as there are a lot of different shapes out there. The first one we're going to cover is round wire, which is the most commonly used in wire wrapping and wire weaving. It's also the easiest if you're just starting out. You don't have to worry about twisting the wire. It also tends to be less expensive than the square and half round wire, although half round is half the price because it's half. Get it? Anyway, it is easiest to use. It's also the most accessible. You're gonna have a much easier time finding round wire in stores, especially in craft stores, than you are, say, square or half round wire. Another common shape of wire would be square wire, and you'll most commonly see this with wire wrapped pieces, usually using half round wire to secure everything together. It's a very popular option, and it adds a lot of dimension to your pieces. You can even twist it if you actually want to twist the wire to add some more texture to your pieces, and it's really pretty. But like I said, it's not necessarily the easiest for the beginner, as you have to be not only paying attention to what you're wrapping, but you also gotta pay attention to what direction you are leading the wire, because it will twist, and it is insanely frustrating when you're first starting out. So if you're going to start with any kind of shape, I would highly recommend starting with round wire. The next topic we're going to talk about is gauges. And what is a gauge? A gauge basically indicates the thickness of the wire. So in the United States, we use this gauge system, whereas in places like the UK, they tend to measure by millimeters. But if you're here in the United States, you'll probably know it best by the gauges. And the way the gauge system works is that basically the larger the number, the finer or the thinner the wire, whereas the opposite is true. So the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. So in this case, 30 gauge wire is super thin, whereas 12 gauge is super thick. Now, what gauges do you use for what project? It kind of varies. Um, I highly recommend looking at tutorials as they have those listed out and you can get the wire based on that tutorial. The most common gauges that I see specifically for wire weaving, which is what I do, is 20 gauge, 18 gauge for base wires. But for weaving wire, I typically use 28 or 30 gauge. If you're wrapping, you may want to use 20 gauge square wire, for an example, and half round wire, maybe 22, 21, even as fine as 24 gauge. Those are the most common gauges that you will see in wire wrapping and wire weaving. Another thing to talk about is wire hardness and how hard you want your wire to be. For wire weaving, I highly recommend using dead soft wire. So it's super soft, very easy to manipulate. It's also a lot easier to create swirls and loops with that particular softness. If you are looking for something for components maybe or ear wires, half hard is really great. You can weave with half hard, but it's more difficult on your hands. Another option, of course, is full hard. I don't recommend using that at all for any wire craft as you basically impossible to use. So unless you're making some kind of memory bracelet, I don't recommend using half hard wire. Now we're getting to the exciting part. What type of wire do I use for my jewelry? The most popular wire that I see in wire wrapping and wire weaving is copper. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One, it is really pretty, especially if you add patina to it, it really accentuates texture and brings a lot to the piece. But there's a lot of other good things about copper. Copper is very accessible. You can even repurpose it from like old, old motors that maybe you have laying around. It's also very inexpensive. So if you're just starting out and you're gonna make a ton of mistakes, copper is a huge way to go. Another metal related to copper would be brass. It's not as popular in color, but it is very similar to copper in all of the aspects that I have mentioned. Another wire that is very, very popular would be sterling silver. However, if you are just starting out, I don't recommend using sterling silver, not necessarily because of the hardness or the difficulty, but just because of how expensive it is. Depending on the type of wire, it could be 
20 cents per inch or more, depending on the gauge of the wire you use, or it could be as little as two cents for the weaving wire, but it adds up over time. So if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend using sterling silver, but as you get better, you can definitely invest in that. And it is a very popular metal choice in jewelry making. Another type of wire you may also see is stainless steel. However, the softest stainless steel I have used is about the same hardness as half hard wire. So it's very difficult on your hands when you're first using it. However, it is really great if you know people who have allergies, maybe to nickel or things like that. You just need to make sure that the type of stainless or alloy doesn't contain nickel in it, but it does make some really beautiful jewelry pieces. So if you ever want to challenge yourself, you can definitely go that route, but I would not recommend it for beginners. And the final type of wire I want to touch on is aluminum wire. It's probably the one I'm asked about most commonly, and that's because it's just, it's everywhere. And it's also very inexpensive and it's also easy to use, but the problem with it is that it is too soft. So you, if you're weaving with it, it tends to what's called work harden. So as you work with wire, it does harden. The problem with aluminum though, is you, you continue to work with it, it becomes brittle and it also breaks. So it's not really ideal for wire weaving. And as far as wire wrapping, it's still very soft. So even if you do work harden it to help harden the wire, it's still too soft and it's just not gonna hold onto your stone. So I recommend using it for things like maybe ornaments or bookmarks, things of that nature, just not jewelry that's going to be worn and perhaps abused in day-to-day -day life. Another type of wire that I forgot to mention is gold wire or gold filled wire. Gold filled wire is pretty easy to use but it's also very very expensive. It's much more expensive than sterling silver wire unless you're going to be making a really special piece or you're just going to wait until your skills have advanced to a level where you're comfortable. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. So those are the types of metals that are available to you. Like I said, copper wire is the best one to start out with or brass wire. And eventually you can work your way to sterling and even into gold wire. And speaking of gold filled wire, there's a question between what is plated and what is filled wires and what, what is the difference between those two. Plated wire is basically, most commonly I've seen, is a copper wire with a very slight coating of, for example, sterling silver. It's about 1% of the thickness, so it's very, very thin. So that means that as you're working with it, it's very possible that you can mar the wire and completely remove the plating that is on it. It also is the same if you are going to buff or polish your piece, it's very easy to remove that. However, with filled wire, filled wire is typically brass core and it especially for gold it also adheres better to brass from what i understand the filled wire is basically 10 percent of the thickness so it's 10 times thicker than plated wire which means that it can take much more abuse so if you're polishing it if you need to sand out any maybe marred marks or mistakes that you've made you can do that um, you can also if you're using for example silver filled wire you can patina it as well but eventually, as you continue to polish it over time and over the years, that plating will wear off. I haven't seen the same with gold filled. It tends to be much more resilient. Now, one final thing I'm gonna to touch on as far as the types of wire available out there is coated and non-coated wires. So copper wire is non-coated. Typically, if you're getting it from, for example, a hardware store, or even if you're buying it online, you're buying it you know, from Rio Grande like I do in one pound spools. So this is a solid wire. There's no coating on it at all, which means it's going to patina. It's going to darken over time. Whereas you can buy wire from, for example, para wire, and it tends to have a anti tarnish or a tarnish resistant coating on it, which basically means that it's going to keep, keep the metal from discoloring. There's a couple good things about that. If you're wanting to make something out of silver and you don't want it to tarnish, that is a good option for those that want to use that. However, if you do want to darken the wire or if you are wanting to polish the wire you can't really do that because there is a coating on it and the coating can also be removed by accident either like through using your tools or even just damage from dropping the piece so if you're going to use a piece that you want to last for a long time I don't necessarily recommend using plated wire but it is great for those that are just starting out as it is less expensive than buying solid sterling for example and the last question you may have is where do I get wire and I have several answers to that. So it just kind of depends on where you're starting out and what your budget is. If you're just starting out and you just kind of want to experiment, the craft store is fine, although the wire can be very expensive in comparison to buying it online. But if you have a gift card that's just burning a hole in your pocket, you can definitely use that at the craft store. Just be sure to get wire that is not aluminum. There, You can get the uh, coated wires that are typically different colors and that will work as well. 
Another place that I get my wire, I tend to source most of my wire from Rio Grande. That's where I get my copper wire and my sterling silver wire, and I absolutely love it. But the downside I can see is that most of the time you have to buy in bulk. Because of that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're just starting out, unless you really want to invest in it. If you kind of want to get an assortment of wires, I recommend going to craftwireusa.com if you are in the United States. They have actually different listings that have selections that you can choose from, so it makes it easier on you when you're just starting out. And I've left more information in the description below as to where I get all of my different types of wire as well as descriptions of the type of wire that I use. And I hope this video was helpful to you. If you would like to stay up to date on any future uploads or learn more about how to create your own woven pieces of jewelry, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And until next time, happy weaving.